Mm. All right, good evening. Once again, welcome to Prince Hall Esoteric Lighthouse. Oh, we're just going to call it Esoteric Lighthouse. Uh, we're going into episode three, the the law of three. Uh, you got me, Mike Williams. You got brother uh, Akoni Vons, brother Chris L, Chris Lewis L, brother Charles Watson, brother Robert Howells, brother Christopher Leonard, brother Dre Clark, and brother Tim Fields on right now. And uh, today, uh, again, like I said, we're going over the law of three. And uh, go into our disclaimer real quick. We are the Esoteric Lighthouse. We just so happen to be some Prince Hall Masons talking about esoteric topics. And uh, we do not represent any Grand Lodge or Masonic affiliated body with our discussions on this show. Um, all of all the information and any things and opinions that the panelists say or discuss are solely ours and it does not represent any organization Grand Lodge, district, or local body. These views are ours and ours alone. And uh, that's it. All right, I'm gonna jump this thing off, starting off with a little bit of information that I pulled from Buddhism, talking about the three jewels of refuge. And the three jewels of refuge are known as the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. All right, Buddha, the Buddha, most people think Buddha is an actual person, but there's many forms of Buddhas. Anybody can enlighten themselves to become a Buddha. That means you are a representation of enlightenment. Somebody who found the notes, the knowledge, somebody who got the light, somebody who's achieved something, who's, who's attained something, who has awakened their consciousness. Um, this individual represents the source of light that illuminates from the East, kind of like a WM per se, or, you know, slow-mo in a temple. Uh, Dharma is the moral code of the universe, and that code is living, the living and body and, and the fundamentals and the principles of law, religion, and duty that governs all reality. You govern yourself accordingly, and, you know, in a just and constituted lawfully lodge, per se. And Dharma is not just uh, the moral order of things, it's it's the uh, it's the cosmic law, and it goes in uh, the the easiest and the simple way to put it. It's the work you put in. That's your dharma. Uh, dharma helps you achieve karma, positive karma or negative karma. So they both kind of coincide with each other. Dharma and karma. So when you look at that word dharma, always think of your work that you're going to put in to find out the outcome uh, to generate a specific outcome. Uh, the Sangha, the Sangha is a community, basically that's your friends or a group of brothers all serving that one common person, uh, purpose, uh, uh, basically harmony and love and understanding and acceptance. We as free and accepted Masons, we, uh, we represent a Sangha uh, to a certain extent that broadens not just in a uh, Buddhist way but in a, a global way because we don't really have a specific religion or a group or a type of identity that makes us masons masons the the masonic sangha uh it does it doesn't care about your religion it doesn't care about uh your background where you come from it doesn't care if you're rich or you're poor it doesn't that doesn't matter a masonic sangha you we meet on a level point blank and at the end of the day that's how we should all live life with anybody masonically or just in general uh, bringing everybody into our sangha all right next i'm gonna go into the three eyes three eyes are um essentially imagination inspiration and intuition you cannot go into any esoteric study or into any any type of way of learning or gaining knowledge without having a clear means of having an imagination, being able to be a free thinker and let your mind wander and flow with what's going on. And 
essentially you got to close your eyes and let your ears do the thinking and hearing for you so you can see what's going on, not with your physical eyes, but with your other eyes. Um, imagination, it leads to being able to see inside your soul and being able to pull those things without within inside yourself. Um, inspiration, it's basically how you interpret symb uh, symbolic Im images uh, that we have attained to inspire us to gain knowledge. And uh, some images are internal, some are external, but uh, these images or inspiration goes along with imagination. So those top two things right there lead into intuition. If you got imagination and inspiration, you get intuition and you can figure things out and you get a direct perception of truth without having any convoluted thoughts or convoluted views based on having a good int intuition. And that comes through understanding your inspiration and your imagination, putting those things into a conceptual mix to get, get you uh, uh, basically spiritually conscious, which is the main objective. All right. Sorry about that. All right, the triad. Um, in Buddhism and Hinduism, you have something called the, the, the divine triad. The divine triad is the Atman, the Buddhi, and the Manas. Uh, Atman is your pure conscience, and uh, this is what guides you to be mind, body, and intellect all in one. And it helps you gain a transcendental power where you transcend all types of things uh, with your thoughts and your emotion, which leads to your intellect, just like I was discussing in the other slide. Uh, basically, the Atman is the true you. And once you know you pull back all the layers of you know what you think you are, all you're left with is your Atman. And uh, that's kind of like that voice in your head. That's the voice of reason that most of us don't even want to listen to because we take on too many outside influences. The booty, the booty is the discernment or discrimination, the judgment, intelligence, understanding, presence, and uh, perception, reason, comprehension, and realization of self-knowledge. Um, booty is that superior reason that that's coming from your heart mainly. And um, that that goes into the compassion and, and things like that. Uh, it's just that, that feeling of love that comes from within inside uh, and that feeling of love, it helps you to be discriminatory and judge based on the affairs of the heart. And, um, I'll explain that later, but just touching on that real quick. Um, manis, manis derived from the root man and it basically means to think. Manis is the root of English term man as just mentioned. In Hindu, uh, the word manas is used to uh, with a great flexibility and thus can be applied in any variety of ways in understanding your psyche. Um, but uh, manas for this particular thing, um, it, it deals with more of your gut feeling. And uh, this is what makes man think, you know, think, uh, I won't say crudely, but instinctually. And um, um, these are the three, uh, the top three triad, which is going to lead into the monad. All right, um, the monad is essentially what we would call the point within the circle. And that's the one source of everything. Uh, it's des described as God and um, it's that superior intelligence and that power of all things. Um, and it's the true substance of light. According to Manly P. Hall, the God of Pythagoras was the monad or the one that every everything he described God as the supreme mind distributed throughout all parts of the universe, the cause of all things, the intelligence of all things, and the power within all things. He further declared the motion of God to be circular, the body of God to be composed of a substance of light, and the nature of God to be composed of the substance of truth. Manly P. Hall. Uh, monad has three aspects of superior superiority, it would, which is the trinity, or rather a monad or unit of three, more specifically three sephiroth in the Kapala, which are uh, Geburah, 
Hesed and Tiphereth. Um, at the birth of Isaac, justice became united with mercy and uh, became blended with the person of Jacob. These are the offspring, and therefore it is written, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in which I will be glorified. And that's Isaiah 49, 3. When you look at it, it breaks down the Atman, the booty, and manas, the, um, the Atman being Hesed, which was, is found in the heart, then, uh, sorry, I got that mixed up, but uh, you have the Atman, which is Abraham, and then you have Gibberah, the booty, then you have Tipareth, the manas. All right, continuing on with the monad. Uh, a monad basically is a Greek term for uh, feminine, monas, and one unit, just as I mentioned on the other slide. And uh, in Gnostic systems, it's the supreme being known as the monad or the one, the absolute, the alien, the perfect, the aeon, and many other archetypal names. Um, down in the bottom left corner, there's a depiction of where it fits at on the tree of life. When you look at the tree of life and you throw, um, you see the old man that's um, basically hanging on the tree of life. He has one hand on Gebra, Gebra, the other hand on Hesed, and his heart area is in Tipareth. So um, when you look at it, one is on Boaz, one is on Jahin, and his heart is in the middle pillar. All right, uh, with that, these lead into the three brains, and um, the three brains have something to do with uh, our intellects, our emotions, and our motor instinctive sexual aspect, or that gut feeling, or that... Um, that male, just not trying to be vulgar, but that male, you know, gumption, get out and go, um, chalismo type stuff. Uh, we call these the three brains because they function on their own and each have their own way of thinking and processing. Our intellectual brain, that's our voice in our head that never shuts up that I mentioned previously. Uh, the emotional brain is what we think is our real self in the emotional center, which is our heart and part of our identity. Um, this is what we believe that we should feel, what we should like, what we should dislike, and uh, which we define ourselves. That's the judgmental center that I was mentioning earlier. Um, the instinctive brain, people live instinctively acting and reacting before they have a chance to think about what they're doing or even if they know how to feel emotionally about it. So that instinctual brain, uh, it works both, it works positively and negatively. Uh, having quick instincts, you can get out of any situation that may be life-threatening or um, uh, potentially causing harm, somebody being in harm and you're gonna say somebody, anything can come from your instinctual brain. And it could be even problem solving. Somebody can't figure out something real quick. You can you just have a gut feeling or that instinct to solve that. Uh, at the same time, that instinctual brain uh, tends to work negatively. That's more dealing with our animal passions. And uh, sometimes our animal passions will go unchecked and then it causes other things to go wrong in life. And I'll leave that alone for another topic. Um, here we have Shin, Aleph, and Mem. These are the three mother letters, uh, which are in Hebrew and the Kabbalah and uh, some other aspects that are hidden in Freemasonry that not most people recognize immediately, except those who've traveled those windy roads and they'll see that. Uh, Shin relates to the heart. Shin is the fire, the three primary forces of God uh, resides in Shin. Shin is the flames of the heart and it is the emotional energy. Mem coincides with water. Mem relates to the Holy Spirit, which is precisely the sexual energy and the waters of life. We get the word Mayim, which begins and ends with a double Mem. Uh, it has an open Mem in the beginning and a closed Mem in the end. Uh, 
and that relates to our motor instinctual sexual brain. The waters of MIM are the vital energy that we use to balance the other centers when we transmute that force uh, into the other centers. Um, transmutation, going into alchemy and spiritual development, um, then we lead into Aleph. Aleph literally means wind or breath. Aleph relates to the father related in our intellectual brain. The intellectual brain grants us the capacity to do the spiritual work. It encompasses the process of mental energy. So when you look at the mother letters and you relate them to the different parts of your body and you start to um, meditate on them and meditate on different aspects of the God in you or the, the, the God, the breath of God in you and your thinking and your rationale into a spiritual or esoteric sense, you start to see things in a different light and different things around you. And when you look at three, once again, it, it's something, um, you have one that you, know, you look at protons, neutrons, and electrons. Uh, Aleph, Shin, and Mem are like the protons, neutrons, and electrons. This is the atomic uh, atmosphere in which is in the Kabbalah and many other esoteric schools and trains of thought. All right, moving over to the trimerity. Uh, the trimerity is basically a Hindu or Indian word for uh, three different aspects of God. Three different aspects of God in Hinduism is Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Most people think Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva are three different gods. However, in reality, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva are three aspects of the same deity. Um, it's just drawn and configured differently and they've opened up different schools based on different thoughts and uh, essentially Brahma is the creative aspect, Vishnu is the preservation aspect and Shiva is the destructive aspect. Um, there is no polytheism in Hindu and um, as I said they're just all the aspects of the same Lord or the same God. Uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva represent the harmony and balance of all natural laws. Uh, they are the macrocosmic and the microcosmic. And we as Masons say youth, manhood, and old age. And it encapsulates the word Aum, A-U-M, uh, which is the balance and the equilibrium of nature. Uh, Brother Charles Watson, Watson put us onto that and its relationship, its relationship with the three, Jews, uh, the, the three Jews and the universe uh, being with three centers corresponding to our own material aspect comprised of vibration rates all appear in as substances a u m om uh, going to meditative mantras um, the universe has three centers and we have three centers of our own they are a material aspect comprised of vibrations which appear as substances the universe is the body of God. It is the neutralizing force of the sun, absolute manifestation of interaction of the positive and negative forces of God. We live in the body of God. We are made in the image of God and God's fan fancy is immortality. God is the eye of the universe and is termed his endless and not inferior to time. Time is a perceptual perishing. There are three kinds of motion are, and are alluded to in Vedic books. These are translational motion, sound, and light, which are taken to be the equivalent to earth, air, and sky, and which is found in the penalty of the FC. Motion or circumvallation of the lodge, sound, the attentive ear while hoodwink and light receiving gnosis. Removing the hoodwink and when you remove the hoodwink is when you receive gnosis. Uh, the number three has been used since the time immemorial to describe un the fundamental attributes and principles of personalities of God and the forces of nature. Now here, I'm gonna break down the three different aspects of the trimurti 
going into Brahma first. Brahma is a symbol of eternity, uh, the immutable and the origin of creation and the ultimate root of self. Uh, Brahma essentially rec uh, represents the, um, pretty much represents the knowledge of self and um, he has development, uh, developmental qualities of the divine indispensable uh, for attention of self-realization. Uh, the Brahman or eternal purity. The eternal purity cannot be attained without the attainment of purity. Brahma represents truth uh, and the eternal cannot be attained without practicing truth. Brahma is the fearless one. Uh, the eternal cannot be attained unless you become absolutely fearless. Uh, Brahma is sat for existence of absolute and conquered. He, Brahma, basically you conquer your evil according to Swami uh, Savinanda. Uh, from the division of the first being comes the father and the mother and their sexual union of love comes the son. Um, that's another three. From the sun comes creation of the universe. And just in Hindu accounts, the golden womb created from a male and female forces at the dawning of creation gives birth to Brahma, the creator and, and of the entire universe. Brahma or Brahmananda and the Incan mythology of the guy Viracocha emerges from the womb, symbolized by the water of the cave, to bring light to darkness and to create. Uh, the word avior or or in various meanings in him, Hebrew among them are it represents light, the flame, the east, or the proper name or with the U R, which is the Bible mention which is mentioned in the Bible, the birthplace of Abraham. Uh, that's the close correspondence between Abraham and there's a close correspondence between Abraham and Brahma. You start moving the net letters around, it comes up like a, a anagram. You take the A from in front of Abraham and you put it at the end and you get a Brahmin. And um, the creator is the fact, this is a known fact to many occultists that Abraham was born in or, which is the equivalent of saying the creative power, which has its source in light and its implications of the creator in the name of Abram, becoming Abraham. Also, that means high father, four faces of Brahma, the creator, or four triangles. And uh, the four triangles are threefold in significance because they are symbol symbolical of the zodiac. Um, you got four quadrants of the zodiac with three faces, and the window into Brahma is represented by the pineal gland. Brahma is the creator or the initiator. He's the end of the apprentice degree and Solomon and the sun initiating light to start the day. Excuse me. Vishnu is the preserver. Vishnu represents water. He's the benign nurturing God who periodically sends avatars to earth to help humanity. Uh, the most famous one was Vishnu's eighth incarnation, which was Krishna in the, the uh, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, whose name means the Christ. Um, an external breath exists within the heart of every life. All of the breaths of life are the great breath emanated from the absolute in the dawn of the Mahavantara. All breaths are resplendent dragons of wisdom. The great breath is the cosmic Christ, the army of the voice, the Kuan Yin, the melodious voice, the Avalokiteshvara, and Vishnu, Osiris, and the central sun. Vishnu is the sun in its meridian height of the fellow craft degree. This is where we work and to preserve and cultivate what has been initiated. Shiva, Shiva is the the. Um, Lord of pure, changeless, attributeless, and all pervading transcendental conscience, transcendental consciousness. At the end of the Prayalar, Pralaya, um, the Supreme Lord thinks of recreation of the world. He is the he is then known by the name Sadasiva, 
He is the root cause of creation, and from Sadasiva, creation begins. Uh, Lord Shiva represents the destructive aspect of Brahma. He destroys all bondage, limitation, and sorrow of his devotees. He is the giver of Makuti, or the final encamp uh, emancipation. He is the universal self. He is the true self of all creatures. He is the dweller of the cremation ground and the region of the dead. Those who are dead in, to the world, Shiva is the destroyer. The death of GMHA or the Master Mason's degree is closed at the day with the senior warden. All right, the law of three, uh, the law of the world or of creation, every phenomenon, phenomenon you know, on whatever scale, um, macrocosmic, subatomic, or two cosmic, um, whatever the world springs from interaction, it's always through the three forces, uh, active, a passive, and a third one, which is a neutralizing one. Uh, then new things arise from those things according to Gurdjieff. Uh, there's a correlation between the law of three and the alchemical three essentials, sulfur, mercury, and salt. The three essentials are the alchemical principles of forces, including sulfur to, uh, to be the soul, consciousness, intellect to be the true will or the personal fire, salt, the body of our own body, specifically the matrix wherein sulfur and mercury can be Inter uh, can interact and mercury represents the spirit or the vital force mercury is the link or the bridge reconciling principle between the higher frequencies of the soul sulfur and the uh, lower frequencies of matter found in salt basically in a nutshell what the law of three means is that every action requires three different forces to put things into motion and with that i'll stop sharing so we can open up for discussion all right, good afternoon, brothers, once again. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed that presentation um, on the Law of Three. Um, I left a lot out so we can talk about some stuff at the same time. So uh, who want to start off? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just say, you know, again, great presentation. Um, for a lot of the brothers out there that might be a little bit confused and say, well, you know, how does that all fit into masonry? Um, when you start to travel in, in the different houses, especially the uh, the Scottish Rite, you'll find that most of the characters and symbols and so forth that our, our good brother used in his lecture are tied in to those degrees heavily. Um, it's just another way of looking at the beautiful truth that we all seek uh, in our lives. Uh, these, these characters, you know, like I said, it's probably kind of new for some brothers who may haven't studied these characters or maybe are just, um, you know, having a good time in the blue house. But once you start to reach out and travel, again, I, I say, especially the Scottish Rite, you're going to see every single one of these cultures and symbols that the brother beautifully tied into uh, three. Again, brother, great presentation. We could have left it at just the presentation and rolled out on that. You know, good job, brother. Uh, uh, the, the characters I used, uh, I used Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva because uh, those are three main deity, the three main deities in Hebrew, I'm not Hebrew, but uh, Hinduism. Yeah. Um, and they, if you look at the principal officers of the lodge, and uh, most of my presentation, I'm referring to the Blue Lodge, it's just most people don't look at the Blue Lodge in that particular light or that right. particular aspect. Yeah. Um, Brahma is essentially the worshipful master. Shiva is the senior warden and Vishnu is the junior warden. And then if you look if, on the flip side of that coin, if you take each station, you always have three people at each station. If you look at the WM station, you got two people sitting in front of him. You look at the junior warden station, you got two people sitting in front of him. You look at the senior warden station, you got two people sitting in front of him. And then when you start putting that, that, that's that law of three. Each station has three, you know, you have three things you always have, and it's always in the same shape. And you got the opening, the closing, the opening, the middle, and the closing. If you look at the stations, each station is a mini lodge within itself. Yep. Yep. Each station, mini lodge. 
So um, then when you look at the altar of Freemasonry, you got the three great lights, the three lesser lights, and the law of three re continually revolves around uh, the lodge. And, you know, certain things, we circumvent the lodge, we do certain things with certain instruments a certain amount of times, sometimes it's three. And then we got three degrees in Masonry, which is basically going into, it. it's almost the same thing as the three Hindu deities or the three in one, the tree of Matsukano or uh, which is another term for three, um, but the tree of Matsikano is the creator, the preserver, and the th destroyer. You look at the inner apprentice degree, you're you're being created. When you are becoming a fellow craft, you're preserving, and then at the end of the master mason's degree, you taking all of that and you're destroying it, and you bringing up a new person. Mm -hmm. The temple fell or the, uh, the creator of the temple fell and somebody else was brought in too um, and being raised on the score of virtue. So when you, when you take those three characters and you apply them to yourself and you apply it to the lodge, you see it all in the blue house. You just have to go out and you have to study and you just, you can just sit up here and say, okay, I'm gonna look at the writ. The writ, and um, many other texts that coincide with masonry have been developed to make you go seek. If you just sit up there and look at it, you never gonna find anything, which is great. Uh, which is great because we need people to keep it running for us. So when that one brother that wants to get it, figures it out, he's gonna say, uh-huh. Because at the end of the day, masonry is just a gatekeeper for some and, um, and I will allow them to be the gatekeepers and it for others that's our play shop you know that's our you know it's our home and we'll have fun like remember this group we all having fun with everything we do in it and essentially it is what it is um, but then going back into the law of three just as there are three male aspects of God there's also three feminine aspects of God because Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva they all had three different wives too, and uh, what was in a uh, Shakti, Parvati, and uh, trying to remember the other one. Uh, Parvati was Brahma's wife, and Shakti's Shiva's wife. I can't remember Vishnu's wife's name right, right off the top of my head. But and the same thing when you go into Buddhism, you have Buddha who's sitting up there, who uh, while he's out in the wilderness, sitting under a Bodhi tree, which is essentially acacia uh, of form of acacia uh, while he's sitting under the Bodhi tree meditating um, he's tempted by the three daughters of Mara and the three daughters of Mara they ain't nothing but the three Jews once again so when you you conceptualize the whole body of spirituality you see that everything is synced into it and the markers of masonry they knew what they were doing when they synced all this stuff into it uh when and as brother watson said you get exposed more when you go into higher degrees especially on the scottish right um but it's also found in the york right too but um you have to you know you have to study you have to put your, put your mind leave your mind at the door of thinking with common sense of well, I'm not thinking with common sense but leave your mind at the door with try to go in with a preconceived notion that this one particular symbol means this and this only symbols are multi-layered and multi-modal and multi-faceted and that's a fact and if you if you look you in know, the blue house um if you look in the blue house as well we are all in pursuit of that which was lost. And what was lost, if you think about it, if you, if you marry that up with numbers, uh, one of the three ended up dying. So when we don't have that three, it's, we don't have that perfection. We don't have that harmony. We don't have that beauty. So, you know, it, it, it's good you to see. You got a broken triangle. There you go. Ooh, no, you didn't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah, it, it again, you know, the three all in masonry, it's just there. You know, if you go into like you, you just went into different cultures. If you go into uh, the Christian religion, you know, that 
Uh, Jesus was rose on the third day. There were three people with him on the cross. There were three wise men that came. Uh, they gave three gifts. You know, we can, we can go on and on. If you look at folk folklore, you remember the three little bears, the three little pigs, the three... Yeah. Uh, through w three wishes, there's always been something that was that synced the conscious of of mankind with three. Yeah. It, you know, I it's it's all, there. You go, there you yeah. go. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy that we have uh, brothers up here representing Royal Arch as well. Yeah. Like we were, yeah. we all went into the closet together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah when but, I, when um, three pops up, I think of Royal Arch a lot, a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. Brother Williams, let, let me tell you how we was in the same frame of mind, you know, vibrating on the same frequency. On page 23 in my uh, Masonic Why and Wherefore book, of course, they talk about what do the three principal officers symbolize. Mm -hmm. And they went, you know, a little bit further in detail where they were talking about the officers symbolize the trying nature of God and man. And according as we view them from one or other of these angles, our explanation of each varies. Taking the divine triad first, they represent the creative, as you said, Brahman, preservative, we're talking about Junior Warden, of course, uh, Vishnu, and um, um, annihilative or transformative sides of deity, which of course is Shiva, the destroyer. So they link up with the sun in its three great phases. Mm. So as you correctly have said, worship master represents the rising sun, therefore God, the creator, Brahma, right? So he's the one who calls the lodge into being out of nothingness, just as God created the world out of chaos. Mm. In India, this aspect, the God is called by the name of Brahma and by us, the grand architect of the universe. So it will be noticed that the master opens his lodge and sits in the east, the place of light, but he does not close it. A significant fact, that work being reserved for another officer, as we said, is the senior warden, who, represent, who represents the destructive side of deity. So this was the part, though, my brother, that he added that he said the junior warden, in his divine aspect, they said that the line, which is the plumb line, the perpendicular straight line, is actually the caste mark that's associated with Vishnu, that element of water and corn. Corn. I thought that was interesting. And that represents the rain that falls from heaven. And then they said um, the senior warden, the cast mark for him, of course, for Shiva is the horizontal line, which we, of course, represent through the level. And that's the cast mark for Shiva. So that, that's kind of interesting. They said also that he is somewhat, to some extent, identified with the moon. Now, of course, we know he does not wear that jewel, but who wears that jewel for? Right. You know what yeah, I mean? So Exactly. So I was like, man, I was like, get out my head, brother Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that uh, after this, when you get a chance, go look at a picture of Shiva. Shiva uh, in his corn rolls that's wrapped up, that's a whole nother story. People don't know that mm -hmm. uh, the Hindu gods and the uh, the Buddhist gods, they got corn rolls and dreads and their skin mm -hmm. is blue. I've seen that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah uh, that's a whole nother aspect that we can talk about at another time. But when you look at Shiva and on the right side of his head is a crescent moon. Mm. And who sits on the right and what does he have on his staff? Mm. <laughs> I find that interesting yeah. as well. But yes, uh, uh, and essentially like like the law of three, uh the law of three. I mean, it's so many different things that you can build upon on the law of three. Uh, and when Pythagoras, he didn't like the number two because it meant division because you got one aspect and you got another aspect and you have to bond those together to get three. And essentially that is the breakdown of the, the 47 problem in Euclid, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And uh, it forms a triangle. It forms that triad, and um, when you know the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, the uh, uh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Who else? The um, uh, man, woman, and child. Uh, you know, sun, moon, and star. All of that. That that all flows with each other. And um, man, shit. Excuse me. Water, blood, spirit. 
water blood spirit. Yeah, yeah. And in that sense, you know, like I when I first came into masonry, I had to really study hard about what's this big deal with numbers. You know, I know a lot of uh, a lot of brothers come to masonry already. They deep deeply rooted in numbers. Like, but I it was new to me. I was like, it's a three, five, seven. You know, uh, you start getting into other degrees. We start talking about nine. We see seven. You know, the numbers are all over the place. And then I I, I was studying the middle chamber one time. Um, and I got to geometry and I, I saw a definition in the book that I was reading that geometry was the study of numbers in space. And then as you mm -hmm. climb on up that ladder, music is the study of numbers in time. And then when you get to astronomy, it's the study of numbers in space and time. And so then I said, man, that sounded like a definition of physics. Physics is the study of space, time and matter, right? And you know, so at the end of the day, numbers allow us to read things around us the physicality around us we don't get it everything deals with numbers i like how earlier you um, talked about the atom in your lecture how the atom has that's the first thing i think about when i when i start thinking about three is where you have the proton the neutron uh, and the electron you have three states and these are the building blocks of everything that we can physically see right we know that there's things that exist beyond or and beneath the atom, but I'm saying the building blocks of matter itself starts with those three. You can't have it without it. And right. I think it's just coded into, you know, I, I would even go as far as to say our DNA, our, our fiber, we're magnetically uh, attracted to numbers. Well, I mean, when you look at the whole family structure, before you have your second kid, it's only three of y'all. Right, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's only three of y'all. So, and you come from a you are a, you are the product of three, no matter what. Yeah. It's all you, uh, even though you may be the second child, but you still the product of three. Why? Yeah. Because your mother and father created you. Everybody is a product of three. Mother and father creates. Mother and father creates. Mother and father creates. And then um, you touched on it when you start talking about physics. You named three principles right then. Then mm -hmm. when you start talking about three, five, and seven, those are three different principles as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. So it's always a sequence of three. The three pre uh, produces and creates other threes. Mm -hmm. yep. Then you end up with three, three, and three. You back at nine. The only <laughs> once you get to nine, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the nine is basically in uh, in Kabbalah's. It's is is yes saw it which takes you back to the waters that the waters that I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, somebody say we three must agree and you got three and you got three and you got three and it takes you back to nine. It takes you back to your soul, which is the foundation, mm -hmm. which is, uh, which leads you to that, uh, which is above Malkuth or the physicality, which is basically the four elements, which is matter. So, you got three triads of three above matter. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And, and um, I was about to say, you got uh, when you're looking at not just uh, the the Kabbalah or those three triads of three, but when you look at uh, courses of action, you have to think it. You have to plan it. You have to do it. Yeah. 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 The three Stop is just all around happen. us. Yeah, it, it's all around us. And even I would go as far as to say, you know, like when we talk about the Royal Ark, you know, I was looking at the lodge one day, just really looking at it through uh, through my mind and not just what it looks like. But if you think about it, that Ark is in that lodge, you know, if you go from the master station, and you go to the junior warden, the junior warden sees the sun at its meridian, and then it sets. So if you truly look at the lodge the way we speak it, you can see those three transitional uh, points of the sun, which is the arc itself. That arc's right there from day one. We may not really understand it fully uh, in the Blue House, but it's right there for us to see. Right. And the three by three, I don't know, in some jurisdictions may be a little bit different, but I know doing our opening and closing, uh, we do uh, 
uh, hit the gavel three times, the master does, then the senior warden will hit it three times, and the junior warden. So, you know, as I start looking, I go a lot of these overtones that we're not focused to see in the symbolic degrees as you travel to these other degrees and you reflect back, you're like, wow, some of this stuff was right there in front of my face. I just didn't see it. Yeah, my father used to tell me, he's like, you can go, you can be in the third degree the whole time and never go to any other house in masonry and not realize that all the other houses are right there within the first three. Yeah, degrees. yeah, they are, yeah. they are. And, um, then when you just said those three knocks on those three stations, when you go back and you said you see the royal arc, again, you got three by three by three at each station. There you go. That's what that three. was alluding to. Yep. Yeah, and it goes back into nine. And then when you put the altar in the mix, mm. you got ten. Yeah. You circum yeah. you you, you, uh, you uh, I can't talk Circum right. Yeah, man, I always tongue tie that word too, man. Circumambulation. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I tongue tie that word all the time. And around the altar, and when you do that around the altar, you you tie all of that together. You're making the uh, you're making that motion. You're bringing that force into. You're bringing the physics in mm -hmm. to the lodge, and you're putting the sun into motion as the person moving around the lodge. <laughs> and uh through that force and uh going back to hinduism when you look at uh anybody know anything about naga the naga the story of the naga yeah all right the seven-headed snake serpent yeah well that's one of them that you, that uh one version of it but um in the beginning of time you had uh the two forces which goes into it goes into the story of krishna and brahma uh krishna and uh arjuna uh, it's one verse in there where Krishna and Arjuna, they're talking and um, they're talking about the creation of the world and it starts with a Naga snake and you have the Pandavas on one side and you got uh, was it Arjuna's people on the other side and mm -hmm. they're pulling this snake back and forth and that the snake being pulled back and forth essentially starts spinning around in a spiral like this and they're spinning around and they're bringing life into being. Mm. And that life that comes into being from uh, the spinning, Vishnu is generating it by having the Pandavas and uh, Arjuna's people. They, you know, that's that positive force versus that negative force. Uh, the Pandavas are the negative force, while um, Arjuna is the positive force. They're in motion. Vishnu is controlling that, but. All along, Brahma is the divine breath that's breathing that stuff in. Mm. And the total outcome of that action, which is Shiva. Shiva is destroying both sides and keeping everything in balance. He's, it's so it's like it's a, uh, the, the outcome is the destruction. Uh, Brahma is preserved or is initiating and then... Uh, was that Vishnu is preserving all at the same time. And we're doing that same motion in the lodge when we're walking around and we're circumbunt. Circumambulating. <laughs> we'll get you a t-shirt with the word. Yeah, exactly. We're going to break man. it down for you. <laughs> hey, bro. hey, leave my brother alone, man. I, I, I chew on the word too, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I had to come down off the Temple Mount, man. Like, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Okay, Moses. All right. <laughs> Good stuff, though, man. Good stuff. When you think about Moses and uh, Moses and Brother House can back me on this or make uh, chop my head off if I get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when you look at Moses and you know when he's on, you know he 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 was found in a reed basket floating in water. That you know, that's that creative aspect again of Vishnu being that that water element, and Moses literally is fire within the water. Moses is that inspiration. He's that spark that initiated everything that started the Hebrew faith. Although it was, uh, it's the story of Abraham that was passed down. But if Moses hadn't initiated all of that stuff, we wouldn't be having this conversation, talking about it. Yeah. 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 Uh, 
the the name Moses of Moshe is uh, literally means to be drawn from the water. So it the the character of Moses is representing coming from the water, and that's exactly what happens at birth is you're drawn from your mother's womb or the water that has broken. So it actually symbolizes new birth or new creation. And we know that uh, the story of Abraham, Abraham was given uh, certain commandments and Noah was given certain commandments, uh, which were considered the seven universal laws. But the the Torah or the the law of God to govern the children of Israel came by way of Moses. And that symbolizes the new beginning of what we now call Judaism or the new beginning of the way which the children of Israel or the descendants of the 12 sons of Jacob are to now govern themselves by. All right. Um, could, could I... Could I just build on there, brothers? So, Luma God, right? Y'all was talking about three, five, and seven. So, in this section here, see, it's messed up. Y'all can't even see it. Hold on. <laughs> I turn the background off. You know what I mean? Like, I do what I got to do. Yeah, there you go. Let there but be light. Everybody's in one accord. So, it says here that you have these particular types of numbers that they were talking about math and mysticism triangular number which is three then you got five and then you got seven my man put it right up in there and he yeah. said that those are male numbers called virile primes yeah, yeah and, see, and that's the thing about numbers all the uh going back to pythagoras and the the numbers all the masculine numbers are odd numbers and all the feminine numbers are feminine uh uh even numbers even. yeah yeah yeah. Oh, by the way, thank you for putting that book in my hand. Uh, I forgot what page I'm on, but I'm like 200 some pages into that thing. Wow, and I'm beautiful. loving it. Beautiful. It is a dope book, man. I mean, I got that book at a time where I wasn't even a Mason yet, man. And my head was spinning. I was like, what, what, what? I'm this, you know, because I was really into math, but I was like, so that book taught me that mathematics, like we have language arts. And then we have mathematics. Yeah. And language, of course, is expressing and describing the world through words, right? You have mm -hmm. letters, symbols, characters, so on and so forth. Whereas mathematics is being, you're representing the world through numbers. It's this whole, a whole other language. Maybe you're describing the same thing, but you're using numbers. So, I mean, that's what kind of like really hit me when, you know, Brother House was talking about Hebrew. And, and of course, uh, Brother Mike was talking about that stuff and how those letters also double as numbers. So when you talk about Aleph, you know, Bet, Gimel, so on and so forth, they're associated with numbers. And then they have other numbers that are kind of like 10 times that. So you have something that represents 100. You have something that represents, you know, so on and so forth. So I was like, wow, that connection between mathematics and language was taking place early on, you know. Yeah, what so you just it, described was the the trivium and the quadrium. You know what I mean? Where <laughs> you 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 know the the trivium when you're talking about is symbols that are represented by words, and we start off with grammar, right? And then we get into arithmetic. When we get it, that's that's our introductory to the quadrium, and that is basically starting our journey with understanding symbols that are represented by numbers. So right here, and, and the reason I bring that up is because all of, the, all of these different things, you mentioned that you studied this prior to coming in masonry. The beauty of all of this is that the things that we are learning in masonry, we call it secretive, but it's really only secretive to those who are unaware. You know what I mean? It's not like something that is buried somewhere, some lost treasure you got to go find, right? At the end of the day, you can find this information in different books. What I loved about masonry is how it tied it all into one curriculum. You know what I mean? Like if you're looking yeah. for a place where you could just, you know, have a, a curriculum you can study that will send you on these, I, I just say it like a hunt, right? A treasure hunt. Because even like, I give you a good example. Like a lot of brothers will say, we, we are taught logic in the middle chamber. No, you're not. You're pointed to logic in the middle chamber. 
It's a point to. It's saying you should go out and study logic. They say, oh, we, we're taught grammar. In the, no, you're not. You're pointed. These are nothing but road maps. They're saying, here's the map. Go travel. Go travel. Yes. You, you see what I'm saying? So that's why we have a lot of brothers who can walk the middle chamber, but they can't walk the middle chamber, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it makes total sense because yeah. they think some people, you know, and I ain't knocking them, but they think grammar Soon as, oh, that means I have to talk proper. Oh, my name is Michael. How, <laughs> right, thou, right, how right. are thou doing today? Right, right. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's point articulation. Well. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that you got to go out and articulate your word. You know, be like, you know, I'm going to go from my name is Michael to my name is Mike I am. You know, so, right, right. come on, <laughs> man. Miguel. Yeah, <laughs> that's not grammar, man. That's you know, that's not studying grammar. You know, it's putting your words into sequence, phonetics, and things like that. And a couple of y'all heard me before. I I went to college for the second time uh, because of the studying of the middle chamber, and that's what put me in the light. And like, how do, how do you, how can you sit up here and say you walk the middle chamber? And you have no clue or understanding about grammar, rhetoric, arithmetic, you know, astrology, astronomy, any of those things when you haven't studied it. And, you know, oh, well, we got the five senses, you know, you talk about the five senses or youth, manhood and old age. You can say those words and you can look at people and say, oh, he's young, he's a man and he's old. But what does it mean to be a youth? What does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be old? Uh, what do the five senses do? We know they're hearing, seeing, tasting, touch, and smelling, but how do they affect us? And um, then at the end of the day, what all these things are, are receivers, their reception, their reception points with inside of us. And essentially that's what the Kabbalah leads <laughs> into. It leads into receiving and masonry teaches, it's supposed to teach you how to receive information. Just like uh, Brother Watson just pointed out, he said, okay, you walk the middle chamber and it's pointing you into that direction. It's pointing you in that direction so you can go receive the light, receive the information of those particular words, not to recite those words, but to receive those words. And you know, as you, as you can see, you know, a lot of us brothers, we, we can clearly see when we have social discourse with our brothers that they didn't get it. You know what I mean? They, they'll say, well, we got wages. We received wages as a fellow craft. Yeah, you, you no, know, you were pointed to wages. You got to go do the work. The wages were given to, to workmen in the quarries that were building on a temple. If you're not doing any temple building, you, you didn't get any wages. You got a map that says if you temple build, this is what you will get. Now, if I'm talking to you and you, you start using ad hominem fallacies, where you want to attack my character, then something tells me that you didn't get the logic map. You didn't read that logic map when you can't talk. And I'm not, and I'm not necessarily talking classical English, but when you can't, what you were saying, if you can't put your words together in a harmonious way where it can come across as rhetoric, right? And rooted in some degree of logic, buddy, you didn't get the, <laughs> you didn't read the map. You did you know not read I mean? the middle chain, you, you just a, looked at it. <laughs> yeah, and you it, it, you didn't get any wages. You know, that's what gets me, brothers. Like, I got wages. That was a rep. That was a play. It was a representation of something that is going to occur in the future. When you take this map that we give you, called a ritual or a degree, if you go out and you live it, you walk it. Guess what you're gonna get? You're gonna get these wages. But you didn't get them tonight, buddy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Tell them, Pat. <laughs> it, it, it kills me. You know. What yeah, just, see, and that, like that's it. where that's where knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That's where understanding comes in. You know, yeah. when you talk about, um, you know, it's one thing to have information, uh, but even even in in uh, communicating uh, effectively and communicating smoothly, um, it takes a certain level of understanding in order for you to master rhetoric. You know, and when you talk about uh, the law of three, just think about how early we begin to learn about the law of three you know, within or without masonry. I mean, as toddlers, you learn about uh, three blind mice. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The three little pigs, uh, yeah, 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 three yeah. musketeers. Three um, little bears. And even even when we, um, you know, when we're looking for uh, 
we want to laugh and joke with one another. We, I remember when I was a kid, we used to watch the Three Stooges. Yeah. You know I mean? oh, yeah. Even when you come into masonry, uh, when you're when you're trying to reach the sublime degree of a master mason, uh, the third time is a charm. You know what I mean? So when you just yeah. talk, it, it's yeah. like the, the three. As a matter of fact, uh, I saw somewhere that um, in Latin they would say "omne trium perfectum," which means everything that comes in threes is perfect. Mm. Um, so that I mean, there really is power uh, in the number three. Um, and I'm I'm just happy to be on in this forum with you brothers. You know, you some some of the things you brothers are, are bringing to light for me are things that I've seen seen my entire life. Uh, but it was it was hidden in, in in plain sight right before my eyes. You know, so I really appreciate you, brother. Yeah, man. So brother, watch you, brother. Yeah, man. You you good good to see you, Dre. Brother Watson, you hit on a good tip. It was about what do we do outside of Mason? Yeah. And I think yeah. that's where there's a lot of fault to that we're seeing is that everybody expects to come here and get fed and water everything. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. think that's the mishap because there's a lot that we have to do outside before. Because I think I think everybody on this podcast or this 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 particular talk, we did a lot of studying before we got here. Yeah, and and I can tell from the conversation, you know, brothers are well learned, and you bring that knowledge, and then you got into masonry, and then you connected the dots, and then it expounded further, and like it was said, that that understanding now turns into application. So now you can right. teach others. Okay, now you got to apply what you know. So now here's how you because you talked about all the the, the, the Hinduism, but but I want to bring it back to some practicality because as people watch this, how can I apply that to my walk? How can I apply that to my Mason life? Because that's all good knowledge at the end of the day, but what do I need to do? Do I need to meditate a little different? Do I need to exhale, inhale a little different? Do I need to meditate, like you said, that intuition, that imagination? Because when you're a worshipful master, you gotta be creative. So what do I need to do to become creative? What I need to tap into? So that's all that's that connects the dots for me. So yeah, it's good stuff. Brothers, think think about think about what we're going through right now in this in in our country, um, specifically in the world in general. When we talk about uh, what's going on with uh, police brutality, and you know, there's a lot of uh, conversations that are going on face to face, and even in you know in Facebook, man. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've seen I've been a part of some conversations and, and witnessed some conversations um, amongst Masons that were really disheartening for me, you know. And we talk about the uh, the law of three. Even in this particular situation, what it all boils down to, what we're really talking about is the law of three. In the midst of all this police brutality, conversation, uh, racial uh, injustice, um, what we're really talking about is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's what that's that's all we're talking about here, you know. Um, so it, it's really it's really powerful. I, I hit up Oconee earlier today um, and because um, I had been somehow I, I, I lost membership in the group and I asked him to, uh, to add me back. Um, and I asked what the topic was going to be and he said the law of three and, and, and as soon as he told me I just thought about that's what this country is that's what all this this discussion is about that's what all this uh, this strife that's going on in our country right now it's all centered around the law of three, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So not only is it something, you know, you listen to, you know, somebody out there is listening right now um, and they're listening to, to uh, some of the brothers talk and, uh, you know, you got some deep, some deep conversation going on here, um, but it's really not even as deep as we might make it out to be. Um, again, when we talk about the foundations of us learning about the law of three, we learn as, 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 as toddlers and when you get to a point where you're where you're knocking, and you're looking for more light. We we learn of, we learn about it in the context of uh, the Masonic life. But when you look at society, it's what we're talking about right now is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's just one more uh, way to see the evidence that the law of three is is uh, not only does it exist, but it's, it's very relevant every single day for everybody, Masons and non-Masons. I tell you, brother uh, uh, Coney, you mentioned something that always hits home with, with me. I always say to brothers that if you give me a lecture, you're going to have to give me something I can walk away with right now, right? Um, 
and again, you know, we're talking about three. There's a whole lot of knowledge in, in, in what we've talked today. Uh, from a Masonic perspective, uh, we'll just say Blue House, if I was just to bring it down just a little bit, if you're saying, you know, what would I give someone in reference to three to walk away from is something that's in all of our face from day one, when they tell us that the, the master station is the wisdom to contrive. And so I remember when I came in, I wasn't probably as smart as some of you guys. So I had to go look that word up. I said, what the heck is contrive, man? <laughs> and so I looked it up and it said plan. So it said the wisdom to plan. And so I had just realized I'd already got knowledge. They gave me the light. So now I, now I got to deal with the wisdom. I got to experience some things. Then it says to me that the senior warden station was the strength to support, right? And so then I know I have to grab the resources that I need to support my plan, right? And then I can see the beauty. I can adorn the beauty. Now, the moment that that, that beauty is gone, then something has went wrong with the wisdom to contrive, I didn't plan right, or I didn't gather the right resources, and now I've lost the word. Okay, if you notice, it broke it back, if you go back, we lost that station. And and I always ask myself, and I discussed this with some of you brothers before. I said, why could we lose another station? Why don't we lose the senior warden station or the master station? Why junior warden station? Because I can tear down a building but I can always build it back if I'm a workman, if I work, if I take the wisdom to contrive, if I take a plan, find the resources to back that plan, I can always build that building again. So to me, that's a practical thing that everyone can get in threes from the, the blue house. Everything in your life, like you guys were posting the other day, you got me kind of a little bit feeling a certain kind of way. Y'all was all on swole on Facebook, you know, working out. I was like, man, I got to get back in the gym, man. You know, but what is that going to start with? I got to now wisdom to contrive. I got to come up with a plan. I got to gather the resources, the strength to support that plan. And in three to six months, I'm going to be looking like house and, and brother Williams. So we all swole up. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and so in all aspect of our life, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your job, whether no matter what it is, those three will always allow you to uh, deal with truth in your life. If you don't have them, or they're not present, you will not have the truth and you will not have the word in your life. And you just broke down the, uh, the, two, the other two grandmasters, Solomon yeah. and Hiram yeah. Retire. Yeah. So, and who, who was the wisdom and who had the resources? Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't put that together. I didn't put that together. I didn't. But this goes back to something that House always, you know, I would say beat, beat, he beats a couple brothers in the head with it is that we get so lost in these characters, man, that we forget what they're really pointing to. If, if there was anything that we could be able to one day with this platform communicate to our brothers is man these characters you got to embody them and then guess what now they're alive uh, house was talking to a brother i think today or yesterday and i, I think they were uh talking about a, some characters and house says you know those characters did never exist and i i was going to chime in and say you know they don't and it's, this is my opinion, they don't literally exist, but they do exist. Now, I sound like I just contradicted myself. When you embody the lessons of that character, it live, that character lives today in you. You become Hiram and Biff. Right? And see, that's the issue. What, what people reading the volumes of sacred law needs to do is read those words out loud. Because when you read them out loud, you now have become the character. Mm. You are the person speaking those words. Now those words become more in a physical sense. And that kind of goes back to, uh, the, it goes to the law of three and it goes back to the post that I did the other day about the listener, the thinker, and the speaker. And that is the way we start to transition down the, the tree, of, tree of life, of the Kabbalah tree of life, because the Keter, or the crown, represents the listener. And Chokmah represents the thinker. 
and Bina represents the speaker. And that is going from the, basically the ether all the way down into what is now going to be manifested as the word. And that's mm -hmm. what people fail to understand when they talk about John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Well, God represents the listener. And it's going all the way down to the word that became flesh or became physical. And when we speak things into existence, we're actually speaking things into the physical world. But we have to go beyond that, the I. Everybody thinks of the I, this, this, the I is the self. Well, no, the I is the illusion of the self. The I represents the actual ego. You need to go farther back to that which is the listener. You know, it's a saying, think before you speak. Well, if you don't listen to what you're thinking about, you may actually speak before you really need to actually speak. You might be thinking, you might be saying this, and you think, hey, I need to say this. But if you were truly listening to yourself, you would have already rationalized, used logic and everything else to say, hey, I don't need to say this. Mm. That's so, the you I was talking about in the lecture. That's the real you right there that yeah. everybody ignores. That's the real you. That's, that's the real you. That's your conscious mind. Yeah, that's that Atman. So, that's right. Um, you, Masonically, you know, that's Hiram Abiff. Mm. Yes. Mm. That, 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 that's, also, that's also Abel being slain by Cain. That's right. Wow. Wow. You see the beauty of that, how you could take these, all of these different, I always say they're different viewpoints. Like if you had the truth in the center, all these different stories and cultures and, and, and religions and, and schools of thought, they've helped me look at the truth from a different perspective, right? A different and, level right. of awareness. And that's why I use different, um, if you notice, I've used different types of religions for all the lectures. You sure have. Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to put that out to brothers to sit up here and say, and show them that the beauty of masonry transcends all cultures and all belief systems. And that's why we're able to dwell in unison instead of being divided. <laughs> And uh, once brothers stop dividing themselves into little quasi cliques or, you know, compartmentalized masons or compartmentalized masonry, we'll have a better system because we won't compartmentalize ourselves. Oh, I'm not going to talk to him because he's over here in that group. I'm not going to talk to him because he looks like this type of mason. He's not the type of mason I am. You know, how we, you know, we the biggest fraternity in the world, but we so divided just because we look at different things because somebody doesn't look the same, doesn't speak the same, doesn't act the same. And um, that still goes back to, and that pulls it back to the law of three. When you take Mike from over here, who's a spiritualist, and then you take Robert over here, who is Jewish, then you take Chris, who's Muslim, and you put us all in the same room and we all talking and we and dwelling in unison, we're mm -hmm. creating that three in and um, it makes us stronger because we understand the power of three. We three agree. And it don't matter what we say or what language we using, we using the exact same words because we feel it with inside of us. That three embodies us because uh, is, you know, you can't, you can and you can you can conceptualize a plan, but you have to ask somebody else is that plan rational? Even though you're thinking it inside your head, you got to ask that one person. Then um, in the military, we call it that buddy check. So you got your have a uh, buddy. Uh, hey, buddy, am I doing this right? Then you got that one buddy that's gonna always agree with you. Then you got to go find that buddy who ain't gonna agree with you. Then um, when you think about it, you look at, uh, you remember those old cartoons? You have uh, a devil on one shoulder and you got the angel on the other shoulder. Then you mm -hmm. got your head. That's another three right there. So yeah, you always have to basically, like Brother Watson said, you have to conceptualize it. Then you have to plan it, resource it, and put it into action. Um, when you look at um, the other, the 
the other the other houses in masonry they always talk about stuff like that when you when you elevating or you know you either being elevated advanced or uh dub created you got something three in those other houses as well and um uh, shit excuse me uh i need to get some water i get uh, it but uh but essentially, when we put our minds and we try to wrap around these things, uh, even when you come with, uh, when you do an art, you, know, I, you guys know I love graphics. It's always, you gotta have, uh, you gotta have that focal point, you gotta have the background, and then you gotta have that eye effect. Yeah. And the focal point and the eye effect are two different things. Most people think the eye effect and the focal point are the same thing, but the eye effect is that hidden gem behind the picture that nobody recognizes. Yeah. I'll tell you the so, um, uh, brother Michael, uh, since you just stated, I do apologize, brother, since you just stated you had to stop to get uh, a drink of water. Let's go back to the uh, rule of three, just for a moment. Since you just said you had to get some water. Mm. Uh, according from what I know, so we're going to use I this. Th I think he's going to break it down on us now. Uh, <laughs> you can only go three days without drinkable water. Mm. Hour three. Wow. You can only go three days, three minutes without breathable air. Mm. Mm -hmm. You can only three hours in harsh and in, in a harsh environment. You being of the back, uh, military background, whether it be extreme heat, extreme cold, you can only endure that for three days, mm. three minutes without a wow. of air, three days without water. So mm. three is still in a essence, the substance of life. Yeah. Because yeah. you need those three minutes, those three seconds, those three days, those three hours to consume the wholeness and goes back to what we rely on in those three minutes, three days and three hours is that divine attribute of those three triangular that we all know of deity and of that spirituality. So I just only point that out because when you said you needed some water, my brain just clicked for a moment and said, <laughs> hey, let me try it there for a second. I, I thought well, we were and, talking about Mim. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Well, if memory, memory serves me correct, isn't the uh, allegorical Jesus? He was doing something for them three days. He was, he yeah, was, uh, sure he was, was. Hit. yeah. But, but uh, everybody misconceived, yeah. But everybody misconceived that he was sleeping. Now, he was actually doing some work according to the word of God. Oh, no, he was woke, yeah. So, he actually <laughs> he went sleeping. down, he went down and did like a grandfather clause according to the Bible, got everybody that didn't hear the word, he saved them, and he ripped the veil. So, there was some work being done in three days. So I mean, it wasn't just anything. So he had, I mean, to, he had, he had to get the keys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, brother. He went and got oh, the he, keys. Hey, he was on some DJ Cali. I got there the you keys. There you go. Thank you. He said, "Let me get the keys." That was come. work being done. That was yeah. work being done. But but when I think of three, the biggest thing that sticks out to me a lot, and this is what I've seen um, missed amongst us brothers, is brotherly love, relief, and truth. And I'm not trying to be all, you know, you know, sentimental or feeling wise, but I'm just saying because when I came into this, I thought that it was going to be a little more tighter. I thought it was going to be yeah. a little bit more, more love. I mean, yeah, I may be wrong, but ring me around the neck as a brother and say, hey, this is what it really is. Let's, let's get this together in unity. You know what I'm saying? Let me show you some love and some truth because the way you're going, you got, you got about 10%, but I'm going to show you the rest of it. You know, we don't put each other down. We don't try to step on each other's neck. We don't look for the next position or the, or the next crown or, or the next apron or the next title so we can be on Facebook, you know, and, and say I'm SGIG and all that good stuff and then just call everybody names and whatnot. Excuse me. You know, no offense to anyone. Thank you. You did your work. But all I'm saying is never forget where you came from because we're all on the same level. Right. And, and my thing is, at the end of the day, we're all supposed to be taking those tools and chipping at our own living stone, our own ashlar, as well as helping somebody else chip at their ashlar to make it a smooth and living stone. And never forget that. So, and and and, and Dre hit a hit a good thing when you talk about the, the, you know liberty and pursuit of happiness, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. As a Mason, 
it behooves me even more that I know not just the knowledge and the esoteric, but I also know the history and the truth of this nation and what it's built upon. And when I know what it's built upon, that even behooves me even more to be active and show that brotherly love and truth, and truth to those that don't know what a real Mason looks like, to go out there and do what a Mason's supposed to be doing, getting dirty. Because let me tell you something, the apron ain't for show. It's supposed to be there to show that you're doing some work. And by, I mean, memory serve is correct. That's what I was told. The gloves were supposed to keep to your hands when they get in that quarry. You're supposed to be digging in that dirt to get that clay and get it on that fire. And then you're supposed to take all that, come on now, the chalk and all that that's supposed to build that, that stone that built upon one another. So these are workman items that I think we forget a lot of times as masons because we get all caught up into the glamour and the positions, but we're about to work. And that work is what Mike was talking about. All that stuff is what we have to be implementing in our daily lives, our daily walk as spiritual beings doing a physical work on earth to connect it all together. So, right, that's the Dharma. Right. That's the Dharma and we the Sangha. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, and it's interesting that you oh, go ahead. point all that out because we still on this uh, concept of three and I'm just, here I go, ranting and raving <laughs> for a moment. Uh, you're supposed to have you know how we got that 24 inch gauge where mm -hmm. you break that down to the service. And then there's that one where you had them eight hours of restoration and relaxation, right? Mm -hmm. So when I think about that, let's go back to the power of three or the law of three. Uh, for those of us, if, I'm gonna take you back to a journey when we was in school. Remember that periodical chart? Yeah. Periodical yeah. chart, since we're talking about the law of three, the law of three on that periodical chart is lithium. Lithium is for restoration, relaxation. Anytime we're out of balance, don't they give those who have bipolar or mental issues or things of that wow. nature says right now, which is prevalent with mental issues in our society, let's use their power of three because lithium is to balance out the discord that we have within ourselves. It helps wow. us relax. It helps us get our mental back straight. Mm -hmm. Brothers, I don't if know I'm if everybody <laughs> kind of looked at it that way, but I'm just looking since, you know, you brothers threw that out there, and I'm like, wow, you know, three is a powerful number for me, not just masonically, esoterically. And, you know, for me as a PGLO, my fraternity got three Greek letters. And those three Greek letters are significant. And I see Brother Chris over there, and he could probably attest because he has got them three Greek letters as well. Mine are a little bit different. <laughs> those letters are significant. I they think Brother Love things. got something to say. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother Love. Say, brother <laughs> Love. Hey, can I say this, though? Bro brother Love, you're going to have to learn to get in where you fit in, my man. Well, you know, Just, I, you got to jump in, baby. You yeah, got to jump in there. Hey, I, I'm trying to be a courteous Q, okay? Hey, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm trying to be a politically like, correct Q. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Hey, I'm going to try to do that one next time. Hey, can I get it? Right there. <laughs> you know, I you know I don't want to step on nobody's toes, but you know the yeah. for me, the, uh, the power of three goes back to the three principal officers, and I think it really shows how you can practically use the power of three in your life. So, you know, you've got the three principal officers, but the lodge is di uh, divided uh, in two different directions. But the one I'm going to concentrate on is uh, feminine and masculine because uh, King Solomon is sitting over there in the masculine and Hiram is sitting over there in the feminine side and Abiff is sitting right there on the line straddling both of them and that's the line of actual manifestation because before three you have two you've got the duality of the word the masculine and the feminine the active and the passive so what you've got you what you see is 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 that the you know King Solomon represents consciousness um, a masculine at attribute. Uh, uh, King Hiram of Tyree represents the soul, a, uh, a feminine attribute, and Hiram of Biff represents that higher self within man. Um, and, you know, I always say, you know, the most important officer in the lodge is not the worshipful master. It's the junior warden. It's Hiram of Biff. Because ain't nobody was trying to kill the worshipful uh, master. Nobody's trying to kill Solomon. 
So the thing about it is, is, is that these also allude to the fact that your consciousness, your soul and your spirit are operating in different realms, just like a point, a line and a surface demarked different realms, different dimensions. So those three principal offers are working in different dimensions. So if you lay designs on an trestle board, like with you know your spirit, um, you want your soul to give birth to it, you want your consciousness to impregnate it. Mm. Mm. That's all I have to say. Let's get back. Yeah, I just want to say while we're on the law of three, we got three people in Texas on the line just saying. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's how whoa. we do. Cowboys fans. Yeah. Cowboys fans? <laughs> I, I, I want to touch on something Brother Coney said uh, because I see you. You you got some real fire in you, brother. Um, <laughs> Thanks, man. Good fire. And one thing that um, I, I want to say to you, stay encouraged because I, I know how I know the feeling where you come to a land and you say, man, this ain't quite what I thought it was. There's some cold blooded folks up in here. You know, um, one thing I did is I started studying and, and it led me to understand that you were talking earlier about the cement of brotherly love. So the cement is the algorithm. It's the glue. It's what congeals us together. But think about it like this. That, that semen is only as good as the individual stone that you're bringing together. So if the brother, this is what I found. If you run into a brother who has not done the work of a Mason, of an inner apprentice, fellow craft and master Mason, he will not be conducive of putting a little bit of cement and bringing them together. He's still kind of rough. He's still chipped up. So in order for you to have a relationship with him, you're going to have to throw more brotherly love and cement in there to get any type of bonding going on. There. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. It, it's, it's just the brother has not done the necessary work. It's a lot. I, I said to someone the other day about, and I don't have any scientific data on this. I'm just throwing these numbers out here. I would say if you walked in a room with 10 brothers, eight of them probably ha don't know what, a, don't have a clue about Mason. It's community yeah. service. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's what I hear all the time anyway, right? I'm like, right. really? Right. Service? Okay. So keep that in mind, brother, is, um, you know, because I thought the same thing. I thought it was going to be a lot more tight. I was tighter with brothers in the military more than I was in in masonry. You know what I'm saying? The, the cement is only as good, that brotherly love is only as good as the preparation that the individual stone has on undergone. You see right. what I'm saying? If it's still rough right. around the edges, you're going to have to just throw a little bit more love out there and a little bit more patience and understanding, and it, it'll move in the direction that it needs to move, brother. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to concur on that one. Uh, in the military and being overseas, and uh, I will say that the military lives is overseas. It's a lot of camaraderie. Uh, it tends to be a lot of camaraderie and a lot of brotherly love. At the same time, you still have the similar problems that goes on in the States uh, as far as, you know, people want to move up, per se, when they not, you know, qualified. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time, you still have that camaraderie because to this day, uh, one of the brothers that I run with, he's in El Paso, but we run every day with each other. He was my junior warden. Mm. And um, we're running with him. And um, my run group, we're all over the United States. We were all stationed and we were all in the same lodge overseas, but we talk daily. Just like I talk to y'all daily, I talk to them daily. And we talk about running, we talk about... And, um, What's his name, uh, Williams? Uh, one lives in Dallas, another one, uh, the one that lives in El Paso, he's about to retire from the army and he wants to move to New Bronzeville. And uh, which one? El Paso. Uh, Roger Craig. Okay. I don't know him. I know a lot of Masons in El Paso. I was just wondering. My yeah. Bad. But uh, make a long story short, uh, you know, he, he's, a, he's at the Sergeant Majors Academy about to retire from there, but we talk daily. And uh, a lot of brothers from uh, that, when I was in Japan the last time, we still talk and communicate at least once or twice a week. And, you know, I showed y'all some pictures of my brother, my brother over in Japan, Hernandez, Frank Hernandez, me and him talked this morning. Brothers from other lodges that I was stationed with, 
overseas. That camaraderie is still there. We still communicate, but I'm hearing brothers saying they can't even talk to a member of their lives that live two houses down from them. I had never seen that until I started coming back to the United States and seeing masonry in the United States. And I think um, we get off topic a little bit, but I think it needs to be addressed that um, brothers need to come together to build and not just in the lodge, but outside the lodge to have that camaraderie. And it shouldn't just be a select few brothers like us talking, but it should be all brothers talking and meeting on the level and instead of just saying, hey, I'm a Mason in name. And I think it's still on topic though, brother. Ed. I think it's on topic because it, it, it deals with the harmony. It deals with the three, agree. You know what I mean? It, what you're talking about is harmony, balance, equilibrium. All of this is dealing with the three. I think we're, we're, we're still on topic um, and, and we're just driving it home from different perspectives. I, I, as I look at this call, the one thing I love about masonry is it's not dogmatic. You guys don't have to beat me up because I don't see the three from a biblical perspective, right? We have talked about the three from a philosophical, a moral, biblical, astronomical, um, Hebraic, Kabbalistic, all these different perspectives. We've talked about the three and there hasn't been one argument. We all are agree because we know that we're dealing, when you pull back the lens or, or, or the mask or the veils, we're all dealing with the truth but just coming from different angles. And if you think about it over time, we haven't agreed. It's, it's, the world is in a disharmonious state right now because we cannot agree upon the truth. We are dogmatic in our viewpoint. The glasses I have on are the only glasses that anybody in this world should ever look through. And if you don't agree with that, we're going to war. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to ostracize you. I'm going to murder you. And that's kind of been the plight for humanity for time immemorial. And, and as long as that is the case with humanity, masonry will always have a place in this world. There will right. always be a place for it. You, right. you just hit something that I should have mentioned earlier. I thought about it the other day, but I mean, uh, when you start talking about the government, how many branches of government do we have? Oh, yes, three. Yes, yes, three. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we got uh, executive, judicial, yeah. and legislative. <laughs> and they hey, all hey, for a particular reason yeah. to, to keep everything in balance and in harmony but uh, sure. some people want to make it one-sided and yeah. you have a one-sided system all fails that middle pillar doesn't stay right, right. Uh, uh, like uh, I, brother love said you know you got the passive and the active, the masculine, and the feminine, and you have to have something to put in balance. And generally, uh, you look at it, the uh, executive branch should be the masculine, and the judicial branch should be the feminine, while the legislative branch should keep things in balance. However, um, right now, in the political environment that we have, nobody wants to have balance. They just want total control. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. And I, re I reflect back on another three, uh, was already touched on earlier, but it really touched me earlier in the week when I, it was Brother House that brought it up. Had me, I was contemplated on it for days when he was talking about the, the three aspects of yourself that, that think, listen, and speak. I tell you, man, if you guys didn't catch that, and I say the audience, you got, man, meditate on that for a while. That That is just powerful. That aspect, if you really think about it, there's that voice in your head all the time, right, that's listening. And then there's that aspect of you that's doing all the thinking. And then there's that aspect of you that opens your big mouth sometimes without sending it through those other parts of yourself, and you may be stepping on your toes, right? But... You know, again, here's another way of looking at that three. And as a Mason, I can accept that. I can deal with that. I don't have to say, well, again, I'm dogmatic in the way that I see things. I don't agree with that. Sounds like some mumble jumble. What Brother Williams said in his Vishnu and Buddha stuff, man, I ain't trying to hear none of that stuff. That's, that is the mentality of a lot of brothers I, I encounter. They, they see, especially my beloved Prince Hall brothers, we see a most of the brothers I run into in Prince Hall Masonry, they see everything through the eyes of a Christian. And if I don't have anything 
um, negative to say about being a Christian. I want to make that clear. But I'm saying as Masons, when we, when we meet, we're supposed to be able to meet on the level. not And you can't be on the level if you come in and you haven't divested yourself of all your metallic substances, right? Anything that would cause any type of disturbance in the, in the lodge. You got to let it go. You got to set it outside when you come into, in, into here. That's right. So again, that's that's the beauty beauty of this platform. If you think about it, starting off with with the lecture, right. man, we was all in Vishnu, Buddha, yeah. Kabbalah. Look at that, yeah. and it all deals with three, all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you see what's behind Ray Clark right there, so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you cross yeah. them stands. See, yeah, yeah. There's a lesson that you learn, and a lot of people miss that thing. I mean, I haven't. I don't know all the intricate. I'm not there yet. But I know a little bit about something. So I know that there's a trial and a tribulation that you have to be able yeah. to, to sacrifice. You, there's some death that needs to happen. Yeah. And I think a lot of brothers are not ready to die. They're not ready to die. They say they are, they hear it. They, 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 it's, 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 it sounds tantalizing to the air, but at the end of the day, they're going to stick with what they know. So when then, she becomes with that real death, that true death, you know what's left? Atman. Right. Mm -hmm. right. and, see, and that's what a lot of people don't um, think about. Uh, Michael brought up, you know, Cain and Abel, mm -hmm. but Abel had to die to bring forth Seth. Mm -hmm. And it was when, when Seth came that man started to call on the name of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's the three again. But right. something something had to perish in mm. order to bring forth more fruits. And mm. anybody that, you know, just goes off in nature, when a tree falls down and it stays there for a while, life still comes from the death of that tree. Mm. Yeah. I'll, I'll take it a step further um, in, the, in the sense that a vegetable root goes down and actually the seed dies and then the root goes down to grow to bring forth mm, yeah. the same with the square root because oh, yeah. the square <laughs> dissects i mean the square root dissects the square and thus it dies to be able to create a larger square on yeah. the side of the root wow. yeah, i think you well, built that didn't you wow. build on that on the uh in the group <laughs> the other day I think I you had, know. yeah, yeah, I think you threw that in the group the other day. And that was another one of them this week that had me like, oh man, I got to go and meditate on this one, man. <laughs> yeah, I think you dropped that on us earlier this week. Yeah. And then, and then, and then that also was for me to elaborate on Brother House is when you talk about it, sometimes you got to take a loss to gain a win. Yep. We came able to Seth, one had to, you know, be that sacrifice to give up for the greater good of humanity. So, you know, when we on a team sport or whatever it is as a team, you know how we used to always say, take one for the team? Man. You gotta take a loss for the greater game. For the I've got a personal manifestation story about that. So um, I was running, um, I was elected official. I was on the board of directors for the Texas Municipal League. And uh, I really worked hard because I wanted to be president, right? And I wanted to manifest that. And so I went in and um, I interviewed, uh, you have to interview for it, and I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. I took a loss. And so understanding, you know, myself, the universe, and, and how manifestation worked, I didn't trip. I realized that, okay, I'm not seeing all the picture or now is not my time or whatever it is that I needed to satisfy my conscience. Mm -hmm. I was able to come back the second time in which I interviewed. And it was three, it was three of us that are interviewing um, both times as a matter of fact. And I was, uh, I was uh, elected. Um, so the, the, yes. this, this, I oh, appreciate it. It's last year, but this this idea, this concept of 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 active and passive creating manifestation or masculine and feminine giving birth to a child um, is really really powerful. And I like to uh, uh, I have a lecture that I do that I recorded in which I talk about how uh, active is making it happen, 
passive is letting it happen. Mm. 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 That's beautiful. Of everything. Some things you got to let on, you know, on the universe to open up her legs and give birth. And I keep going back to this concept because that's exactly what the universe is doing. The universe is just waiting for you to impregnate her so that she can give birth to all these wonderful, beautiful things. Yeah. You yeah. do that consciously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll lose yeah. a draw. Yeah. yeah. So so would you say our thoughts would be the seeds that give that we plant into the universe? Oh yeah. yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Thoughts yeah. are the seeds. So the stone that the builder rejected. The stone mm. that the builder mm. rejected. The philosopher's stone ultimately and essentially, esoterically, is imagination. Mm. Pure and mm. simple. What As a you, man thinketh, so is he. Exactly. Mm. You can imagine and can <laughs> conceive, you can build on. It's the cornerstone mm. of show mm. of all edifices. Mm. So mm. getting back to the beginning of the lecture, what was yeah. one of the first things I talked about? Imagination. So, uh, he wasn't even here, but he agrees. Imagination. Yeah. yeah. Imagination, okay. inspiration. Yep. Yeah, that's good. And that's why, and that's why, the Christ says that you should be like those babes, because mm. the children are pure imagination. Yeah, right? that's why I love Willy Wonka, man. My favorite, <laughs> my favorite movie, pure imagination. <laughs> man, the whole movie is just a treatise on spiritualism. Correct. Mm. Correct. Well, mm. well, if if you look at the never-ending story. Oh, oh yeah. the whole story was the loss of imagination because they weren't reading anymore. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Darkness was taking over because people were going blank. Their hearts were growing cold. It wasn't. They was gone. Yeah. That's why I go See? back and check and, that out. And, 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 and so that's that, when Atreyu had to go do what? He had to give it a name. He had to use the mind. He had to think about and, what he wanted to do. Yeah. And see, yeah. and that's what where Vohu and what Tohu actually means it became void and darkness. Mm -hmm. Not that it was void and darkness. The earth became void and darkness because of loss of spirituality and understanding in the mind. Mm -hmm. That's why God moved over the face of the deep. There you go. Because God had to come back to restore what was lost. Restore mm -hmm. the temple. Yeah. Right. You know, y'all got me thinking about a couple of weeks ago. We was on a, uh, we was in in our chat, and we was talking about the movie Fountain. Remember mm -hmm. that something had to die mm -hmm. in order for him to bring the first father. It right. came full circle. His lady mm -hmm. had to die for right. him to receive enlightenment, and then he brought it back, and to the beginning and he brought life out of death by being mm. the first father of another, you know, to a mm. galaxy, uh, what was it, the underworld of the Mayans that he went yeah, to? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Shababa. Hey, is Shababa. are there any Harry Potter fans uh, out there? <laughs> I'm trying mm. to watch it. Mm. Man, mm. let me tell you something. Don't, no, don't, <laughs> don't watch it. Don't watch it. Read it. Mm. Read because the books are better. What you're talking about is is exact. Harry is the prototypical uh, uh, God Savior Christ figure, right? And in and book seven, I mean, th there's seven books, right? And so if that's not a, a hint to you, um, and it just goes through the alchemical process. And in the mm. end of book seven, Crazy. Harry literally has he dies for his friends. Just mm. like his mother died for him, and it was the blood that protected Harry. So Harry sacrifices himself, and he dies, and he has evil kill him, and mm. then he <laughs> goes to a dream state and resurrects and comes back and oh. whoops him in his ass. That sounds like wow. 17th and 18th degree. Yeah, same that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out, man. Yeah, yeah. We see the same story, just putting different clothes. That's right. Repetition. Yeah. Different man, repetition. Yeah. And that's the thing that we got to always remember. Just, uh, man, always remember that. Let Remind brothers of that every chance you get. You know, even like, you know, 
some brothers would say, let's go to the York right. A lot of, a lot of brothers will resonate with being a knight. I'm a knight. Yeah. And then you got, you go to the shrine. People say, I'm a noble of the mystic shrine. And all of these are the same truths, man. But if yeah. you fall in love with the storyline, you will miss what it is trying to actually convey. You got to peel back. I call it a peeling back. You got to pull back. If you, those, the, you want to, you're a knight, that's good. It rounds you up. It stimulates the mind. It, 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 it puts it in position, in its proper position to receive something, right? Mm. But you got to be ready to receive it. Most brothers are not. They, they don't even get in the position. They, they, they fall in love with these different storylines, and they never go further than that. Well, you know, some don't even fall in love with the storyline. They get they yeah. get caught up in the flash and lights. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you got a good point, brother. Razzle in the dazzle. <laughs> clothing. <laughs> clothing. There you go. The clo they don't even like you said, they don't even get past the clothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. So so real quick, I want to connect two points with a line, right? So, <laughs> brother Williams, and it's kind of like a question in a way. Do you think that and this is the way that I saw the fountain? I he kept trying to save her so much that I think the aha moment for him, because I said he's got to do something different. Mm -hmm. I said the aha moment for him was to let her go. Mm -hmm. When he let mm -hmm. go, mm -hmm. he let that part of him die, and then he ascended. That's just the way you know I saw it. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, we got you know different perspectives on that. And then to bring it to uh, Doctor, oh, I'm sorry, Past Master How Watson over there. Um, <laughs> what you said earlier about masonry, the ritual itself. What masonry is to me when I envision it is the college, right? It's the yeah. edifice, it's, right? Mm -hmm. Because at that time, and I'm about to read Revolutionary Brotherhood a little bit later on, but I think at the time that there were a lot of people caught in Christianity, right? So yeah. they had to create something that would allow them to access other systems of learning mm -hmm. without putting it on them. Because a lot of right. times, it, go up to somebody they say they're christian and you say did you read the quran they, they'll say no yeah. and then you might ask them why and they'll mm -hmm. be like well why would i read it because mm -hmm. i'm a christian but right right, right. it's kind of yeah. like a way of introducing them to something that's gonna it, it's like breadcrumbs that's gonna lead them to something else and then right. something else next thing you know they're, they're speaking to you like brother mike over there like yeah did you notice that Man, when I talk yes. about Jesus, you know, we could call him Krishna and you know, they start yeah. putting it all together. Yeah. yeah. And the thing so is, it like, goes. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut your wisdom, brother. Huh. Go ahead, bro. I'm cool. No, I was I was going back to it. It's funny because I remember a couple of years back, I remember I used to hear Brother Williams speaking. I said, Man, that brother crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I said, You don't know what the heck he's talking about. And so he had said something one time, and I said, like, Let me go study this cobbler stuff, man. And as this, man, it was like a light bulb went on. And then I started going back and reading all the stuff he was saying. And I was like, my God, this brother's putting it right, right there. Right. Yeah. It's, it made total sense. But if you're, if your mind is not open mm -hmm. to, to, to receive different information and to study it, man, you will miss it. And like I said, now I go back and read some of his old stuff and I'm like, oh man, I see what he's, you know, I got, I see all the dots. Right. But before, because it was foreign to me. I, I wasn't introduced to the Kabbalah until um, a couple years back. And mm -hmm. so when I started hearing brothers talk about it, I just, in my mind, I was like, man, they ain't, they ain't left field. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is crazy. <laughs> Even right. when Pike used to talk about it, I was reading Pike's work. I said, this dude in left field. Which Pike I, house? Pike house? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Pike House knows stuff. Pike House, house Hall. Yeah, he do. He do. Hey, make sure you <laughs> have the statue. Mac hey, Mac make sure you put Incredible <laughs> Hulk in there, too. <laughs> oh, we're pulling out your yeah. yeah. statue. Incredible <laughs> Hulk, Pike House. Yes. And <laughs> Hall. <laughs> you know what, Mike? You, you said something that triggered. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Chris, you said something that triggered when we talk about masonry being a school. Um, I always thought of it as a university of many colleges, yeah. as college of Kabbalah, numerology, esoteric, whatever it is, and that, and, that, and that composite avenue by which we take everything, we bring it all together and funnel it into a train of thought by which we can apply those different colleges in this university of one thought. 
that there is a great architect of the universe. And whatever your interpretation may be, whether it be, uh, you know, Muhammad or Jesus, Krishna, whatever it is, at the end of the day, I think what really happens is that, and, then, and we said this the last time when we talk about dying. And I saw a brother on Facebook, he was a bishop, and, you know, um, and he was very, you know, and I was there too at one time. Hey, this is my faith. I apply it. That's what I know. And it's not that he's wrong. It's not that it's, it's, it's incomplete. It's just that that's your faith because that's your interpretation. But let me show you something a little different. I can show you the same. It's like law and order. I can show you the story, but the name and places have changed. Yeah. But the context and plot of the story is still the same. But you take that and apply it to your walk, which is your faith, which is the substance of things, hopefully when the evidence of things not seen, you still have to take the story and apply it, no matter what story it is. I don't care what story I'm telling you, you still have to do something to get something. The universe is a give and take operation. You cannot take from the universe and not expect to give something back. It has to happen. No matter which way you come, door you go in and out, it has to be the same transaction principle always applies. Because you see it in all the movies that we see, you know, when they talk about witches and all that good stuff, they always tell you <laughs> there's rules to the universe. You cannot enact any incantation, ritual, whatever it is, if you're not willing to sacrifice or give something up. Because if you don't, it will take it from you. And it may yep. not be now, but it's going to be later. Yeah. And I don't care yeah. what belief system you have, that is the same principle that applies. Yeah. And that's an instant thing. I'm sorry, my brother. I was about to say you good. You good. All right, go, go to Pike House. I'm gonna be quiet. Oh, <laughs> uh, Pike House, I'll, I'll, hey, Pike House, Mackie. manly. <laughs> and oh, I forgot Mackie too. Ooh, Mackie. Mackie, Pike House, all, all, all. And make sure you put Hulk in there now. Hulk, <laughs> also. <laughs> hey man, they try to say you a white Confederate general, man. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm the archetype. You know, archetype. Okay. <laughs> now, I was just no, saying, but, you know, yeah, everything ebbs and flows. I mean, you know, something's got to give to be received, you know. Uh, and and this, when, when we break down to um, to to creation of uh, offspring, someone has to be the receiver and someone has to be the giver. It is when those two mate together that they become one and life is brought. So, so something has to be the, the positive, the negative, the, the life and the death in order for, for the life to go. You got to understand, like, uh, we're all here as what we are today as individuals because of past relatives that have come and gone. And because they have come and gone, we are now here. So somewhere along the line, someone's going to have to pass away to yield for us to continue moving forward. Right. right. And the problem we got yeah. in this world today, don't nobody want to die. I don't yes. know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got a couple of points I wanted to touch on. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, Brother Chris Lewis's point going into the um, – into the fountain when uh, you're right. She she had to die to give birth uh, for him to breathe more life into the uh, uh, into the world. Then uh, what was the other thing you mentioned right after you talked about um, about that? Oh, masonry is being a college or university. Oh yeah, masonry being a college. When you look at college, right? Uh, you got three basic degrees in college. You got the associates, the bachelors, then the masters, then advanced is your doctorates or, you know, Jewish doctorate or something like that. Now, now that you can look at that as being, you get the three degrees, then if you're going for a doctorate you or a Jewish doctorate or something like that, I mean, you're trying to be KT or you're trying to be a sublime prince or you're trying to be something else. Right. Then, uh, and when you look at education and you look at masonry, it, it, it's telling you right there the same thing. Hey, you got your first level, your second level, your third level. Then you got that advanced level for those that want to go extra. Right. Then, uh, going on to what Brother House just mentioned uh, about uh, receiving, giving and receiving. When you look at your eyes, you, the five senses, your five senses 
a plan on two principles, the giving and receiving in any of those senses. And the, uh, the third thing, or the third thing is that outcome of what you received from either I, I, any one of your senses. And if you look at the ear canal, uh, the ear canal is shaped just like a woman's fallopian tubes. Why? Because you're giving birth to thought through the sounds that are going through your ear. <laughs> when you look at your throat, your throat is shaped the same as a fallopian tube. It goes down, it's got that same hook shape and it goes down. You receive food and you receive nourishment down your throat into there and you're giving birth to your other cells by replenishing it and you're giving food to yourself. Wow. That's awesome wow. because the food also is knowledge because right. of photosynthesis, you know, the light right. that, uh, mm. you know, allows that information from the sun to make that the vegetables grow, even the, you know, the animals as well, but I'm a vegetarian. So the way you were talking about nerves, the same those, thing. You're talking about those degrees, uh, and I've always looked at it that way too, and the, those first three being four. You know, I have this thing that there's the, the three that are four. There's always this three that are four. Um, like the name of uh, uh, God has four letters, but only really three letters. Um, the four holes that the three nails made in Christ. Um, and then we're talking about numbers, but we, I don't know, I may have missed it or I've been off, but we've yet to talk about actual numbers, right? You know, the tarot. You've got the the which is basically just the uh, the numeric system. It's it's it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of like the resurrection of uh, the Pythagorean number system, mm -hmm. uh, where you have one, two, three, and then below that, uh, uh, four is the new one, right? So it makes sense that you go through the associates, um, uh, bachelors and masters, and then get to that next. You want to go to that next level, like you said, that royal arch level. That's that four. Right, and knowledge is always comes, you know, comes in leaps and in, in plateaus where you just achieve another level. And this is what the tarot shows us, um, because all the other numbers are reflections of the first three numbers. Um, and then um, you've got, of course, you start getting into those higher degrees, the three times three, and then the three times three times three. Um, it it's it's. It's just a, a and 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 a, a, uh, I lost my my train of thought, brothers. You was my... hey, you was going somewhere with yeah, it too, yeah, man. Yeah. I was on that train. <laughs> <laughs> I was riding a ticket. <laughs> the 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 it's basically just the 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 Pythagorean numbers and the numbers of three and how one, two, and three. And and I like to teach. I have a I did a lecture a long time ago. I was driving home from Grand Lodge. Um, and I just started talking and I just taught, I, I try to teach alchemy uh, or the essence of alchemy through the Tetractus. Um, no. Tetractus oh. is just mm -hmm. so incredibly deep because it's yeah. that one, two, three. So no matter where you are in a Tetractus, no matter how large it is, you can take the one, two, three and find out the relationship of the other. Mm -hmm. And then back to, uh, Harry uh, Potter and going to alchemy. Um, I'm not sure who mentioned it, uh, but uh, salt, sulfur, and, and mercury. Uh, same, similar in um, uh, astrology as uh, fixed, mutable, and um, somebody help me with the other one. Fixed, mutable, and cardinal. Cardinal. Oh, yeah. Um, and so these are basically like states of, cha uh, of change. Um, and then you can look at them as um, past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. um, so the, 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 the thing about the three for me, and uh, just like the, 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 in, the, in the tech tractus, you can't really, really begin to understand, appreciate, or apply the three until you have a firm understanding of the one, and then, of course, of the two, because duality always brings, creates, manifests the three. Mm. That's mm. beautiful. Yeah. Did anybody that, talk about awesome. that show? Did anybody talk about dark? 
the show we was watching Dark. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, when he yeah. Had, yeah, most of they, us caught up where you at. Yeah. Oh man, well they had <laughs> they had a concept of the three as well, you know, with the past, present, and future, mm. and then the beginning and end. But the beginning and the end actually coming together at the same point, it like really challenges time. And uh, the whole thing is really like dealing with hermeticism. I mean, some of the books that they show, one of the books is like fiction. It's just for the show. Because I searched it on Amazon. Couldn't find it. You know? mm-hmm. Bro, Bro Salam, you talking about the beginning of season four? Uh, no, in the very first season, they show oh, a man. book. They show a book, and it's got a a, a water triangle, you know, yeah. and yeah. it's talking yeah. about time, and the old man supposedly wrote it, but yeah. they came back and gave it to him, so he never really wrote it. He said, I'm a plagiarist. I'm a fraud, because they brought yeah. it from the future and gave it to him, and then, you know, his book was out. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Wait till you see season four, episode one. You mean season hey, three? Now, hey, hey, now that was season giving, three. Like, I think season I three, my bad. Yeah, I got there. I got there. So, <laughs> was, so you, you got that, the, right? <laughs> yeah, you got the uh, youth, manhood, Bruh. and age being shown. In the yeah, that's doing crazy. That's doing crazy. Time. Yeah. Kessler, <laughs> right, right, Kessler, right. Kessler, right. Hulkma, and right. Benna. Right. You know? Yeah, man. Right. And, and that's the crazy thing because in the past, when you saw movies about time, they used to tell you you could not exist with yourself at the same time and place. Yeah. But that kind of went that that went against that concept. So they was mm-hmm. like, yeah, they had you know youth, middle age, and old all together staring at the same time. So it was like, wow, mm-hmm. that was that was good. pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. And you could tell they were the same but, person because yeah. of the mark they the had, the, the mark on his lip. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But but what that does is it it shows you that there is no such thing as the right. past or the future. Everything exactly. is simply in the present. Mm-hmm. Right, because they talk about there's no time, there's only dimensions. That's mm-hmm. right. So when you talk about dimensions, you talk, when you go back to the cube, like it's the same time and point, but it's just a different phase <laughs> in that cube. Or a different and it is. Right. Mm-hmm. That's, because, bear that's, because time, that's because time doesn't exist without motion. And right. we, oh, we, see this, we see this in the point line a superficies and a solid because yeah, it's right. right here but a point don't mean a, a line doesn't exist until a point moves there you and go. It, it moves and it has direction and then you got a line and then a plane doesn't exist until a line moves yes and, plane, and then the plane doesn't ex- i mean a, a, the the fourth dimension doesn't exist until that plane moves and all of that is 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 when you view it from the ant's eye, mm-hmm. it's time. Right. I like that you said that. Just like the, that, the god, and, and, just like the, the goddess of Hecate. <laughs> there's, there's a book called, uh, and it's a fiction book, and I was looking for it. Um, it's about uh, Nicholas Flamel, and it, it is it's a teenage book. Mm-hmm. And uh, these books, man, you learn so much in them, but it's it's it. He goes to the uh, another realm and he sees and talks to the goddess Hecate. And Hecate at first appears as a old woman. And then they rest and go to sleep. And then in the morning, a young girl is talking hot smack to them and like, who is this? And it's the goddess Hecate. Right. And then later on, she's a woman, right? Riddle of the Sphinx. So. Right. Yes, there are exa- uh, there are multiple symbolic examples of, of what you brothers are talking about. Um, and brother John, the salt, what? so the the salt, sulfur, and mercury. Just going right back again to Harry Potter because it's really some powerful stuff, brothers. Mm-hmm. Salt, sulfur, mercury represented by Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Harry is salt. Hermione, which is mercury, because Hermione Granger, H G. Plus, she's a mm. female. She's a wow. female who's who's one of the boys, which means she's a hermaphrodite. Right. And, Ron, and then Ron, who is a uh, sulfur. And what's interesting is it's the three of them together that are battling and overcoming. Yeah. And then they graduate into Harry, and then Harry sacrifices himself. Man, some deep stuff. I can talk, I can, I can take anything that we talk about to doc today and translate it into Harry Potter. Mm. And you know what? And that's not so- only that, brother love. 
what you just described about the point to align, so on and so forth, is exactly what Brother Watson was talking about when you talk about physics. They tell you the velocity is motion in what? Any given direction, right? Mm-hmm. So they come together. Go ahead, and Brother see, Watson. And, and, yeah. and that's, and that's mm-hmm. what you, uh, the understanding of God moving over the face of the deep. Mm. Because God was the point that moved. And once that first initial movement took place, is when time itself took place. Because you, now it can be judged and it can be measured. And that's what time is. It's a measurement from one point to another point. So and when he talked about the alchemical process, about mm-hmm. salt, um, mm-hmm. sulfur and mercury, if you look at those actual alchemical symbols, you'll see them right in, in, in masonry. Yes. The alchemical yeah. symbols of salt, sulfur, and mercury are right there in the blue house. Yeah. So, so what Brother Love said real quick, uh, mm-hmm. I just checked out uh, he, when he started talking about the, uh, uh, not the Kabbalah, but the tarot. When you look yeah. at the, the first three cards of the tarot, you got the fool or the magician in some decks. Then you go to the second card, which is always the same, uh, and it's the... Uh, not the Empress, but the Empress is the third. You got the, you got the magician. Then what the heck is it? Um, and I lost my train of thought. But you got the uh, lady. She's sitting between Boaz and Jaiken. And then the Empress. That's the Empress. Oh, hold up! It's the High Priestess. High yeah, Priestess. Yeah, High Priestess. We high three priestess. Masons. We dedicated to Venus. Uh, the High Priestess. <laughs> Not Venus. Oh, so, oh. Uh, you, 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 the magician. Then you got the high priestess. Then after the high priestess, you got the empress. Then the empress gives birth to the emperor. It go and you know. So just like he said, you have that new birth after three. It took two women to make uh, one man and two women to make another man. Right, right, hmm. right, right, right. So right. that means. You uh, one man had to give to two women. Those two women had to receive to give birth to another man. Mm. 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 Wow! And wow. that's why that's why Jacob had four wives. Mm. Four <laughs> cardinal directions. Four <laughs> cardinal mm. directions, bro. Yeah. Mm. Four, four, why, four elements. And I that's why you earth, did. air, and water. <laughs> he got twelve tribes or twelve sons from four women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those are, mm-hmm. you know, remember I said that Brahma had four heads facing three different directions. Which yep. are, and those are those same as those 12 tribes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all go with all that esoteric <laughs> stuff again. 12 signs. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so since y'all talk about the feminine, it's right here, right? That square that we talk about, feminine, four uh-huh. wives, mm-hmm. right up in there, it's the feminine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think I think we talked about this a, a couple of times in the chat when we talked about the movement versus thought. So when something's at rest, it's darkness. The particles aren't moving. But as they begin to move, that's where that line, the dot to the line, to the plane, to the to the cube, that's 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 actually thought in motion, which is light. So if you're not moving, you're not seeing the light. So therefore, you need to be active to get the light. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thoughts, words, <laughs> light, actions. light moves in waves and particles. Right. Yeah. One, one thing I used to share, I did a lecture one time on, um, on work, uh, scientific definition of work, uh, which is force times distance. And so, you know, if, we, if, you talk, if you talk to a brother and say, well, I'm doing some work, I was using a, an example. I said, if I ask you to go to a wall and push that wall, and if that wall doesn't move, have you did any work? Most brothers will say, yeah, I have. No, you haven't, because the scientific definition of work is force times distance. In order for us to work, we have to move something across a distance. We have to make it travel. Hence, travel, man. Awesome. And who travel? That is awesome. And yeah. uh, Brother John has spoke on how motion is uh, creates time or so. Like, uh, I think about the planets and how when our earth rotates one time that's a day when we go all the way around the sun it's a year right and each planet takes longer to travel around the sun so their years are different if you see what i'm saying the planet furthest away is longest 
<laughs> you know what I mean? He said, go ahead, Mackie Pike House. But, oh. brother, <laughs> hey, if I could interject for a minute, I'm glad you reframed back to that time and motion theory. Yeah. Uh, for me, time can exist without motion, but motion can't exist without time. Because for motion to take place, it is in time. Time is a continuum without motion, without motion or with motion. Time continues without. But you have to have a receiver for any of it to make it work. Because if there is no one receiving it, there is no time. There is no motion because there's no receptacle. And that's why God, that's why let's, God, let's just think, let's just think for a moment. If we were to stop what we're doing right now, let's stop the conversation, let's stop our full actions, and let's just stop this recording and everything else right now. Does time continue or does it stop? It continues no because on. because your heartbeat is moving. Right, right. Your blood is moving. Yeah, yeah the, the earth is moving. Things are constantly in motion. Yeah, the only thing the yeah, only thing is, yeah. the, the only thing that is truly in motionless that is perfectly still or in perfect equilibrium is God. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere to move. That's and that's nowhere. because time um you have to get outside of the dimensions, like I was saying about a point to the line to a super thesis. You have to get outside of the dimensions, and once you're outside the dimensions, you see the time doesn't exist right for us when does time not exist death right before, right before birth and right after yeah. death that's right so this is interesting though because you brothers who are watching dark look at what they're proposing with jonas and the guy hey, in the well <laughs> and martha what are right. they proposing there? Right. <laughs> right. Right. right 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 but that also speaks to I think they're talking about from a military standpoint, they've been studying and saying that the consciousness or the collective consciousness of God is that stillness. There you go. There you go, that, brother. That stillness, when you see a black or a white hole, it creates a hole or a gap. And that creates a time because there's movement happening. So that time is what we perceive here. We can't get here unless we go in and become in that stillness or that consciousness of God, but we're still connected. So that's why they... They don't have a word to conceive what time is outside yes, of the consciousness of God. So that what they do is they call it a hologram. But that's not the real word. I don't think that's the correct word. That's just man's nope. interpretation because nope. he's got a feeble mind. So the, if, the, if you the word Robert, is hanging. If you read Robert Lawyer's uh, Sacred Geometry, he talks about that concept, the difference between phi and the square root of two. And he considers mm -hmm. the square root of two as that hologram um, and phi as the the reality, right. um, but I wanted to go back. Uh, you know, you had said about uh, the, the, we didn't have a word that that um, it really encompasses time, and then you you said you know outside of God, and I was like, yeah, okay, because we do have a word, and that word is the tetragrammaton, because in Papas you look it up, the tetragrammaton really, and I love this, the name of the Lord, the name of God is a mm -hmm. verb. Mm. Right. Right. I've heard that before. It's a linking verb. It's an intransitive verb. It's a linking verb. It mm. means to be. And when you look at it, it means God that uh, was, that is, and that will be. That's the name of, I mean, that is the meaning of the Tetragrammaton, the word, the Masonic word, and it's also who we are and who you are. Well, and so to now, go deeper now, then, as now, it's a verb, then it would be an adverb because it's active on the verb. And that's no, 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 absolutely not. It is, it's, 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 was, it's a verb. Be. Adverbs describe the, verbs. The the tetragrammaton oh, yod hey wav hey comes from the root word of haya. Haya means to be. When you add mm. the inseparable prefix with the yod, the yod hey wav hey then takes on the Aramaic word of hawa, which mm -hmm. then becomes it that causes to exist. So God okay. causes things to exist because it itself exists beyond time. So mm. when we look at the actual word 
itself, you're looking at a true active verb, a verb that is in place. It is not a name because God cannot have a name because no name can encompass that which is beyond understanding. Ineffable. It Correct. It tells you it, what God does. And God is the creative force, the causation of all things that do exist. Yeah, but my religion says he does have a name, and you can't tell me nothing else. <laughs> it's all good, man. Always one in the group. <laughs> Whatever you want to call him, you call him John Jacob Jr. Okay. Yeah, you know, as long as you do what he got to do. If you yes, ask John Jacob Jacob, how did you pronounce that? Um, um, what is it? Hey, Va, hey, how did you pronounce that? Yo. The, 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 the root word, the... The Hawa Hawa. Yeah, so it um it actually when it translates to English, it's Eve. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's mm -hmm. Eve. Hawa. Yeah, yeah, because, Eve. Eve, because Eve is the mother of all things. I so, told you I was trying to get the universe pregnant, didn't I tell y'all that? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I got a lot of editing to do today. Y'all are killing me. <laughs> Egyptology and, and, and sexuality go hand in hand, right? What do you think the point within the circle is? You right. look at it, you see it all look look at the circumference. <laughs> right? It's, it's look the lingam. Look and look at the circumference. Yes. Right. It's the lingam. Right. right. And that's right. why it says male and female created he them. Yeah. It's the coming together of the masculine and the feminine principles mm -hmm. that create it. If, you have, if you've got the, the tarot of the Bohemians by Pappas on page 18, there's a footnote that, that uh, describes this in great detail about the name of God. Mm. Right here. It's beautiful. So, so question, hey. though. And, and I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a minute. All yeah. right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ruffian. Right. Ruffian behavior. <laughs> so in, in the Bible, uh, Pike House, <laughs> the the female that's in the garden that is taken from the proverbial rib of Adam doesn't receive her name until after the sin is committed and the order by which God curses then he calls her Eve so what is that Eve as opposed to what John just pointed out to us is that the same but God is a woman okay I get that I get that so but what I'm asking is, why didn't she have her name when she was first created from Adam, though? Because you're reading a translation. Yeah. Okay. If, if you was reading the Hebrew, you would know that Eve or Hava was always there. And that's why the only person that was removed from the garden was Adam. It says ha Adam was removed from the the garden. It never says Eve was removed from the garden because Eve actually is the principle of the garden itself. Okay. So him being removed from the garden technically is man being birthed from the womb of the woman. Ah, you go back okay. to the three again. The okay. garden is one. You pass through these two another. giant legs in the, in the first or in the second degree, or well, first degree really. The two pillars. Mm. You're being yep. born into Freemasonry. Mm. And they mm. tell us this, don't they? Leaving darkness and going into light. Mm. Right. Mm. But but they do tell us that, right, my brother? Where was the first tile of station? Oh, Outside at, the Garden of Eve, uh, correct? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's the lodge. Yeah. Ah, the lodge. I see that's what not, you did there. That's, that's there. not what my ritual says. I see what you did there. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting tired of you esoteric brothers, man. You esoteric brothers always trying to... Hey, I need a fish I need a fish fry or a fundraiser, man. I'll make them a hit. I got some raffle tickets. Anybody want to buy them? Oh, no, no, he didn't. Oh, no, he didn't say the raffle tickets. He brothers tickets. paid them dues. Them uh, dues. Oh, <laughs> them man. dues. We got PayPal Cash App. Let's go. How are we doing, Mason and Harry? Mm. He said masonry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, Mason tree. <laughs> Mason oh, tree. I think it was Brother Watson that mentioned um, the lodge. And this is the first time I, I heard this from someone else because I, I had a thought a while back and I dropped it. But that was good. 
you said that the lodge has some similarities to the Red House when we talk about the art. And yeah. When you look at the the senior warden to junior to the um, the the virtual master. So if that is if, there, if if we can make that connection, my next question would be: the junior warden is he representative of the capstone in the sense that he is supposed to be the one directing which path we should be going as a lodge, mm. okay, as it points to the celestial direction or the sun or the orbit or the Wizard of Master's direction by which he wants to take the lodge. Is that true or not? Hmm. You say capstone or copestone? Cap. Is it called, is it called different, different jurisdictions? Because I was taught cap. No, they mean two different uh, things. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm talking about the actual, the capstone at the you top a of the heart. A cornerstone and a copestone. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And then you have a foundation stone. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm but I wonder cap. if you're if you're talking about as far as the top, are you talking about the keystone itself that brings the arc together? Is that what? Or is that? Yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. Keystone. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, talking yeah. about keystone. the keystone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, so that, that when I when I visualize, that's what I'm thinking, and I see that, and I see that's the key to everything. Like when, so he should be deciphering and directing as he should as the junior ward. That's why a lot of people say he's the beauty of the lodge. He's he's supposed to be doing what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I connected. But and you know, you know, it says God opened up the the vault of heaven when the flood came. Yeah. Oh, okay. And brother Love like, said earlier, he said the most and, and hit from his perspective, the most important person was the junior warden. Mm. Yep. Yeah, he did yeah. say that. Yeah. He determines labor, don't he? Uh huh. So, like I said, nobody, freshman? nobody was trying to kill Solomon. <laughs> right. <laughs> they were right. Trying to get so. So here's the thing. Do you have y'all do y'all know this uh the uh oh I forget what it's called, uh, but it's um it's another story uh and it has to do with uh Balkis, the Queen of Sheba. Um are y'all familiar with this story? It's I can I can post it so you guys can read it, but I love this story because it really for me, it really brings home the esoteric part of Freemasonry in the sense that uh, Solomon is conscious, Hyman Rift is your higher self, and Tyree is, is your soul. Because what mm -hmm. it's about, it's about the Queen of Sheba. And she, she you know, comes and she um, uh, she meets King Solomon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they promise each other they're going to get married. And she wants to meet the famed builder of, uh, of, of the... Sounds the, like the Queen of the South degree. Yeah, she wants... It, it probably is. Yeah. She, to meet the architect and um king solomon's like nah nah, nah. He, he he delays her from meeting mm -hmm. finally they they meet by happenstance um because um she she says she wants to to, to greet all the workmen or something like that oh and yeah, yeah. Says, no 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 well we can't do it it's it's just it's too complicated and Haim Abib jumps up and draws a a, a, a towel or triple yeah. cow in the air and all the workmen come immediately in an instant and she's blown away by that. So mm. then they start, uh, Haima Biff and Balkis, Queen of Sheba, start digging one and each, uh, one another and they fall in love. And so King Solomon finds out and he's jealous. And the, 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 and the story is, is that he knew about the plot to kill Haima Biff. Oh but yeah. But he yeah. did nothing to stop it, right? Um, so what happens is, is the, 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 the first attempt to kill him, they messed with the, uh, uh, the molten, uh, the, 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 the basin. And he was trying to cast the basin and it, 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 it like exploded and was consumed with fire. And then Hiram Abiff called upon his ancestor, Tubal Cain. Mm. And Tubal Cain came and, you know, gave him some powers and, and restored everything and made the, right. back, the basin back the way it was. And when they woke up right. in the morning, they were like, what kind of magic is this? Right. The right. reason I love that story is because with, with, with Solomon being consciousness and Hiram Abiff being uh, your higher self, you know, we're always talking about a marriage, 
in, in masonry, right? And it talks about the bridegroom in the Bible, and it's the marriage of of that of the of, of the the two parts of yourself to create this divine being. An alchemical wedding. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Wedding. And so high the lower part of Solomon was jealous, and he was jealous of his higher self. And he thought he knew everything, and he was jealous to the point where he knew about a plot to kill, but he let him let him go through with it. It's a beautiful story, and it's got great, great lessons in it. Yeah. Is that the soft degree? Yeah, well, where does the story come from? It, it's 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 close. It um, there's some elements that aren't there, but when you start first talking about it, it remind me of the Queen of South degree. I'll post it. I'll find it and post it. Well, I haven't heard that before, but I've heard that uh, I've heard the plot that Solomon was actually the one that put in place for uh, Hiram to get killed. Yeah. I have heard that, but I have not heard it the way you just put it. So uh, I am very interested in reading that. Let me find. You see it. how open the you see how open Brother Williams' mind is. Like again, this is what I urge urge folks is. Don't be so dogmatic just because that's what wasn't written literally in the ritual doesn't mean we can't garner some types of moral lessons from that story. Right. You know, as the brother right. just said, for him, he said, Brother Love said, it, it drove it home for me. You know, maybe it's some other story that you hear, but for him, he said, it, that drove it home for him. Now, I could take the stance right now and say, I'm not, I, I, don't send it to me. That's not in my ritual, brother. Right. But then we turn masonry into dogma. Yep. You know what I mean? Brother Wynn's over there salvating. Send it to me. I need to get that. You know, that's what masons are about right there. When you, always in pursuit of, uh, of that lost word. Always. Uh, uh, with that being said,